How's it going, everyone? Welcome to Coal Mine Photography, where we talk about photography, videography, and the technology used in both. If you are new to cameras and new to DSLR cameras in particular, you may have noticed an option to switch your shutter speed from something like 1 1 25th of a second all the way up to something like 30 seconds. A thought may have crossed your mind. What would I take a picture of where the shutter needs to be open for 30 seconds? Well, in this tutorial, I'm going to offer a couple of different options for the kinds of things where you'll want to have those longer shutter speeds. Now, firstly, I just wanted to talk a little bit about shutter speed. Later, I will talk about some setups for photography using longer shutter speeds. So stick around for that. Now, first things first. Shutter speed refers to the amount of time that the image sensor is exposed. These times are measured in seconds or fractions of a second. So when you see something like 1 1 25th, that literally means the shutter will be exposing this image sensor for 1 1 25th of a second. These shorter shutter speeds allow you to take something that is moving really fast and make it seem like it's almost stopped in your final image. For example, you could take a picture of something like a hummingbird and make its wings appear to stop in the image by using something like a 1 2,000th of a shutter speed. Opposite of shorter shutter speeds, you're going to have longer shutter speeds. These shutter speeds are generally when you want to show movement or you need to allow a lot more light into your image. Depending on your shutter speeds, you also need to use tools like ISO or aperture to adjust the exposure that way you get a correct exposure. I'll be talking about ISO and aperture later on in other videos. When it comes to long exposure photography, having the right equipment is key. Let's start off with the most important piece, your camera. You're gonna need a camera that allows you to adjust the shutter speed. There are some other settings in your camera that can also help with these longer exposures, such as being able to have a higher ISO without having a lot of noise added to the final image. Next up, it is very important to have a stable tripod or someplace stable to place your camera while the image is being taken. If the camera moves even just a little bit during the exposure, it's gonna introduce some camera shake that will make your final image seem very blurry. Because you're gonna to want to avoid camera shake as much as possible, you need to find a way to trigger your camera without introducing extra shake. You can do this a couple different ways. First, you could use the timer on the camera so that it actually starts taking the exposure a couple seconds after the shutter button is pressed. Second, you could also use a remote release, which means you don't have to press the button on the camera at all. See later in my examples where for one image I used the timer and another image I used a remote release. And then lastly for your gear, it comes down to the lens you're using. You can use a kit lens if that's all that you have available to you. However, there are benefits to having a lens that can have a really wide aperture. I really like wider lenses for these kinds of photos. Rokinon and Sigma both offer really great wide prime lenses. And these are the lenses that I most commonly use in long exposure photography. To help explain a couple different uses of long exposure photography, I decided to capture a couple different images. The first one I wanted to capture was uh, something around dusk so that I could capture a little bit of that sunset color. In my hometown, I was able to find a spot where I was able to capture a more traditional landscape while adding a little bit of humanity into that image. For this photo, I was able to capture a mesa with a interstate in front of it. Now, I probably could have captured this image with a faster shutter speed. However, with a faster shutter speed, it would have made the cars appear to stop. With long exposure photography, I was able to make the cars show motion by having their headlights and taillights just be streaks of light. This made the final image much more interesting while still having the Mesa exposed correctly. For this image, I actually used a remote release. For the second long exposure image, I've always personally been fascinated with astrophotography. For years, I've been wanting to capture a really great exposure of the Milky Way. I've been close before, but not quite as clear as this one. Milky Way photos rely heavily on location and timing. You need to be in a place where there isn't too much light pollution from local towns or other sources. It also helps to take these photos later at night, somewhere around 11 p.m. to 12 a.m. It also helps to pick a night when the moon is going to be in its new moon phase. Even when everything is perfect, the sky is still very dark. So you'll still need a long exposure 
to capture the stars and the Milky Way. For this image, I decided to use the timer on the camera so that it actually started the exposure a little bit after I had pressed the button. When it comes to long exposure photography, it really just comes down to what you are wanting to capture. There's a recipe for each photo when it comes to equipment and settings that you will want to use depending on the kind of image you want to capture. Like a skilled baker, it helps to know your ingredients so that you know which ones to use to capture your final image the way you want. I really encourage you to experiment and get familiar with these ingredients. With this knowledge, you will have a better understanding of the different settings on your camera and what you need to do to capture the exposure you want. If you have any questions or need help with settings, feel free to reach out to me in the comments below. Also, let me know in the comments below if you were able to learn something new from this tutorial. Consider liking, sharing, or subscribing to the channel. Catch you all in the next video.